Rick Hansen, Buddha's Brain, The Practical Neuroscience of Happiness, Love, and Wisdom. Ever wondered how the intricacies of our minds can affect our daily life and emotions? Buddha's Brain, The Practical Neuroscience of Happiness, Love, and Wisdom, delves into the complex relationship between our brain and mind, along with exploring the effects of neurotransmitters on our lives. This summary encapsulates important concepts such as the power of self-reflection, the significance of suffering in our lives, and tips for promoting well-being through mindfulness, positive thinking, and composure. Moreover, the book sheds light on how meditation and reducing a strong sense of self can decrease suffering, and how our brains evolved for love and compassion. Brain-Mind Connection Unraveled the brain and mind, though distinctly different, work together to manifest our emotions and experiences. While the brain is a complex physical structure housing neurotransmitters, the mind represents our mental processes. Neurotransmitters, such as dopamine, induce emotions, however, the interpretation of these emotions relies on the mind. Remarkably, the mind also holds the power to alter the brain structure through the process of neurons that fire together, wire together. This phenomenon proves how our mental experiences and emotions can modify our brain's architecture, as seen in the examples of laughing with friends or the enhanced hippocampi of London cab drivers. Discovering Happiness Through Self-Reflection Many people feel trapped by life circumstances, not realizing that engaging in self-reflection can lead to a happier, more fulfilling life. By examining our mental processes like emotions, thoughts, and wishes, we can take charge and bring about positive change. As the brain adapts to what it focuses on, emphasizing positivity can reduce stress, improve relationships, and enhance personal growth. By pursuing self-improvement, we ultimately transform not only ourselves but also positively impact those around us. It's easy to feel like a victim, believing that unhappiness in life is an inevitable outcome. But there is a way to change our circumstances and bring happiness into our lives, the secret lies in active self-reflection. By understanding our mental processes, such as daily emotions, thoughts, and desires, we gain control and enable positive transformation. Consider the story of Siddhartha, who would later become Buddha. He deeply pondered the sources of his happiness and suffering and found that by focusing on the positive aspects of his life, he could welcome happiness and release himself from pain. This psychological transformation occurred because our brains develop according to our focus, if we concentrate on the positive, it rewires us for happiness. Some might argue that self-reflection equals self-indulgence. However, the truth is that reflecting on our lives helps us grow into better people for our own well-being and that of those around us. As we pursue self-improvement, our personalities shift towards becoming friendlier, more good-humored individuals. Embracing a positive outlook on life has a ripple effect, reducing stress and subsequently improving our relationships with others. Consider the impact of a more optimistic attitude on a romantic partnership, shedding constant worry about the future can significantly enhance the relationship's quality. So how do we achieve this transformation of self and become a happier person who is free from suffering? The answer lies in the forthcoming sections, demonstrating that happiness and liberation from pain are attainable through active self-reflection. The Evolutionary Role of Suffering Suffering, stemming from an evolutionary response, signals danger and helps humans make choices to avoid harm. However, our brain's ingrained approach-slash-avoidance system in today's modern world can lead to unhappiness as we navigate not only physical threats but also abstract emotional states. By understanding the roots of suffering, we can better navigate the complexities of life and consider how our desires may ultimately lead to unhappiness. Suffering encompasses a wide range of emotions, from daily frustrations to deep grief. It serves as an evolutionary tool that keeps us alive by informing us of what to avoid. While negative feelings signal danger, positive feelings encourage us to seek out experiences that benefit us. These emotions stem from ancient parts of our brains, which helped our ancestors make life-preserving decisions about what to approach or avoid. 
Our brains possess a bias towards avoiding harm and storing negative memories over positive ones. This system served our ancestors well as they learned to avoid dangers like snakes and seek out nourishment from sources like banana trees. However, in our modern world, we face the challenge of adapting this primal mechanism to approach or avoid abstract emotional states, such as feelings of embarrassment, shame, or self-worth. Although approach behaviors, driven by the pursuit of positive feelings, seem beneficial, they can also lead to unhappiness. When we cannot attain the things we desire or when our desires cause long-term suffering, we experience emotional pain. For instance, the urge to indulge in a large dessert after a heavy meal might feel satisfying in the moment, but ultimately lead to discomfort and regret. Recognizing the evolutionary roots of suffering allows us to better navigate the complex challenges of modern life. By understanding our brain's inherent approach-slash-avoidance system, we can begin to evaluate whether our emotional pursuits are genuinely fulfilling or whether they may result in further suffering. Unraveling the two darts of suffering Pain and discomfort are inevitable in life, but true suffering comes not from these initial experiences, but rather our reactions to them, often leading to a snowball effect. By understanding these second darts we throw at ourselves, we can mitigate further suffering. Pain and discomfort in our lives are largely unavoidable, occurring in both physical and mental forms. However, the true source of suffering stems from our reactions, our internal emotional responses, to these discomforts. Picture two darts, the first represents the initial discomfort, like burning your hand on a hot plate or facing romantic rejection. The second dart signifies our reactions to these unpleasant situations, such as anger, blame, or anxiety. Often, our suffering is more intense from the second dart, as our emotional reactions exacerbate the situation. Furthermore, suffering triggers our sympathetic nervous system into action, increasing adrenaline and heart rate, making an emotional situation feel as intense as a physical pain, like a root canal. The heightened sympathetic response creates a snowball effect, fueling additional emotional reactions that may persist long after the cause of the original discomfort has receded. By becoming aware of this two-dart mechanism, we can start to understand the root of our suffering and better manage our reactions to potential triggers, ultimately freeing ourselves from the exhausting cycle of emotional turbulence. Embrace mindfulness and wholesome intentions. Discover mindfulness, wholesome intentions, and composure as powerful tools to increase your well-being, generate positive neurological effects, and reduce unhealthy desires. These practices involve mastering awareness through meditation, focusing on positive thoughts, and learning to separate emotions from desires to achieve a happier and more relaxed state. Diving into mindfulness is the first step towards enhancing our well-being. Achieving a state of complete awareness is possible through meditation, helping us gain control over our attention and increasing gray matter in brain regions responsible for it. By practicing mindfulness, we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, PNS, which reduces our heart rate and induces a sense of calm and restfulness, ultimately leading to increased happiness and relaxation. Wholesome intentions, the second approach, create positive neurological effects throughout the brain. They can be defined as constructive desires we hold for ourselves. For instance, envisioning yourself as strong and powerful can activate various brain regions, from the limbic system to the prefrontal cortex, and release neurotransmitters that evoke positive emotions. Lastly, practicing composure is crucial in managing our emotions and curbing unhealthy desires. Composure functions as an emotional circuit breaker, enabling us to separate feelings of joy associated with certain things from the insatiable craving for them. By understanding the impact of experiences on your emotions and distinguishing your emotional reactions from your desires, you can achieve a more balanced sense of fulfillment. For example, success can bring happiness, but constantly striving for it can lead to dissatisfaction and even depression. Composure allows us to recognize that perpetual longing for success won't necessarily lead to increased happiness. Instead, embracing mindfulness, wholesome intentions, and composure can guide us towards a more satisfying and emotionally balanced life. Unlocking Wisdom Through Meditation 
Meditation is a powerful tool that harnesses focused concentration to increase awareness and generate critical insights, ultimately leading to wisdom, the quality of enduring, good judgment. By clearing away the distractions of everyday life, meditation helps to develop a singular, unified mind, opening the path to understanding. Research has found that this state of singleness of mind, often seen in experienced meditators, is linked to high-frequency gamma waves associated with heightened awareness and mental acuity. As a result, meditation can be instrumental in our pursuit of wisdom. To reap the benefits of this profound mental state, you could engage in focused meditation practices such as yoga. Mastering the ego for peace. The sense of self or I is the lens through which we experience the world and define our identity. Although essential for continuity and individuality, it can contribute to our suffering when we take things personally or seek constant validation. To overcome this, we can practice relinquishing the ego, as demonstrated by Buddhist monks and death row inmates with the mantra, no self, no problem. Through meditation, we learn to maintain a balanced sense of self, avoiding over-identification with material things that inevitably leads to loss and suffering. By judiciously choosing when to exert our sense of self, we can embrace wisdom, happiness, and love instead of succumbing to hate and misery. Our sense of self provides us with continuity in our experiences and sets us apart from others. However, it can also become the source of our greatest sufferings. For instance, taking things personally or seeking constant validation from others causes pain in our lives. We can find peace and fulfillment by consciously letting go of our self-centered approach and immersing ourselves in the world without ego. Buddhist monks and death row inmates embody this process by giving up their sense of self and adopting the mantra, no self, no problem. Maintaining a strong sense of self can undoubtedly be useful at times, and through meditation, we can learn when to take matters personally and when not to. However, it's essential to be aware of how our sense of self can grow out of control and result in suffering. This often occurs when we over-identify with possessions and beliefs, setting ourselves up for eventual loss and distress. To overcome this, we can turn to meditation as a tool to help us decide when to exercise our sense of self and when to let it go. For example, during meditation, we can practice reflection without using personal pronouns, such as thinking, thoughts of birds are arising, instead of, I am thinking of birds. By mastering the skill of maintaining a balanced sense of self, we can conquer suffering, embrace happiness and wisdom, and foster love in our lives instead of succumbing to hatred and misery. Love, rooted in our DNA. Our ability to love, encompassing myriad feelings linked to kinship and cooperation, is ingrained in our DNA. The human brain structure has evolved to accommodate love as a key component in our survival. As mammals, our larger brains compared to other species are the result of managing offspring and social relationships. Over time, our brains have tripled in size, with growth focusing on fostering positive interpersonal connections. Neural networks have evolved to express love through emotions such as altruism and forgiveness. The brain's neurochemistry, including oxytocin, also promotes a deep sense of care and bonding. The pervasiveness of romantic love across all human cultures indicates its importance as an inherent trait within our biology. Love's biological foundation is essential in generating trust within communities and contributing to the formation of partnerships for sexual reproduction. This emotion plays a pivotal role in enhancing the chances of successful human reproduction. As human evolution progressed and our brains became larger, childhood periods have extended. With an increase in brain complexity, the time required for complete development after birth also grew. This necessitated the formation of robust parental bonds with offspring to ensure proper care and survival. Love became a crucial factor in the establishment of these connections. In essence, love's roots in our DNA have made it an indispensable element in the survival and thriving of human life. From driving cooperative relationships to fostering parental care, our brains evolved along with our capacity for love, making it central to our very existence. Empathy, key to compassionate bonds. Empathy and compassion, often used interchangeably, 
are intertwined concepts that profoundly impact our relationships. A deep understanding of others' feelings allows us to form stronger, more compassionate connections. Without empathy, people may experience difficulties in forming meaningful relationships and might even perpetuate negative cycles in life, as seen with absent parents. On a more positive note, empathy aids in resolving conflicts, diffusing criticism, and establishing trust, ultimately helping us establish deeper connections with others. When we cultivate empathy, we have the capacity to care for others deeply. This understanding of others' perspectives leads to more reassurance and compassion within our relationships. Conversely, the lack of empathy in life can trigger harmful consequences. Children who experience insufficient empathy from their caregivers might grow into insecure adults facing challenges in forming strong bonds. Moreover, empathy can directly impact future generations. A child raised by absent parents may struggle with relational issues, leading to them becoming exploitative, prejudiced adults and, possibly, absent parents themselves. Empathy is not limited to the sphere of compassion, it is also instrumental in fostering successful relationships. Demonstrating empathy helps alleviate interpersonal tensions and prevents criticism from escalating. An empathic response to a friend's concerns can foster appreciation, creating a more understanding and supportive relationship. Additionally, empathy helps dissolve any reluctance we might have in developing deep connections. Often, the root of our psychological pain stems from close relationships and our childhood experiences. At a young age, our decision-making abilities are less controlled, making us more vulnerable to being hurt by untrustworthy individuals. As we grow older, empathy allows us to gradually overcome this innate wariness and distrust, helping us build meaningful connections and make peace with our past experiences. Through empathy, we gain the ability to form stronger, more compassionate bonds with the people in our lives. In conclusion, Buddha's brain offers valuable insights into how our brains and minds shape our experiences, emotions, and interactions with the world around us. It provides a thorough understanding of the importance of self-reflection, optimism, compassion and the use of meditation to alleviate suffering and cultivate happiness. The strategies discussed in the book reveal how our mental processes can contribute to a more prosperous and fulfilling life. By adapting these principles, readers can achieve a greater understanding of their own emotions and relationships, and ultimately, transform their lives for the better.